two things I want to talk about here. One is that Nick Patrick wasn't even the original plan for this referee spot. Allegedly, the reason they did this whole, we're not going to announce who it is and we'll decide at the pay-per-view and we're going to draw it out of a hat was that you guys, even up until the last few days, were trying to make a play or liked the idea of making a play to get Earl Hebner, the guy who screwed Bret Hart the prior month at survivor series in Montreal to come in with the idea that if his name was drawn out and you realize it's the same referee that screwed Bret Hart, then when Bret comes in and does the run in, maybe that makes sense. Now, the reason I bring this up is if you had that sort of in mind, we didn't though. I mean, we didn't, and we can play with that if you want to, you know, hypothetically, I don't, I have no problem doing that because I love the idea. It's a very cool idea. It's first I've heard of it, by the way. Okay. But so, it's it's so, really exciting because of, because of the Brett situation. Sure. But but anybody, I have to I just gotta say this and then we'll play with it. Um, anybody that knew Brett at this particular point in time. He, he wasn't having that. Not a fucking chance. Not a chance. It, it just and that's why again, you know up until a few days before the event, we're actually trying to get Earl Hebner. Give me a fucking break. Well, what was re- what was written verbatim is Nick Patrick was going to turn heel as a ref in a role that was originally designed for Earl Hebner. However, WCW either never made a strong enough effort to contact Dave or Earl, or they turned down the offer because it's obvious that that's what the original role in this match was booked for. He had it's to- obvious to who, and I don't mean to interrupt you, Connor. And I know it's rude and, and, I love you for giving me the opportunity to do this podcast. But when you roll through something like that, I got to point that out. According to who? Well, you're misunderstanding what he's saying is obvious. It's obvious that the role was to be a heel referee. Okay. So, I mean, we under, we agree on that, right? It's obvious that there's going to be a heel referee. That's the reason the Bret Hart situation happened. So maybe he's freestyling, but it would have been pretty awesome if Hebner would have won the, the referee lottery. But that wasn't in the plans. Um, Meltzer would write after a lackluster match, even which saw boring chance two minutes in Hogan delivered the foot to the face and the leg drop finish. At this point, the plan was for Patrick to deliver a fast count and have sting still kick out before three, but Patrick would rule it as a pin leading to Bret Hart, avenging the wrong done to him at survivor series and getting the match restarted, taking over as referee leading to sting winning with the scorpion submission in the middle. A funny thing happened. Patrick didn't count fast. Now I'm going to keep going through the recap because Meltzer makes some good points in here. But first I want to ask, was Brent Hart always supposed to be involved in the finish? I mean, we know that, you know, how we're going to get there is going to change, but it does feel like if he's the referee in your match for thunder, which we talked about, uh, or not sure rather that maybe having him come back out, you've already had a precedent set that he's a referee. Did that just fall in your lap or was that ever even discussed before day of, as far as you knew? Honestly, I'm not sure I understand the question. The, uh, so, so t- three days before was, was Bret Hart going to do anything beyond referee your match? Oh, I don't think so. Okay. Meltzer would say you can miss time a ref bump. You can blow a move, but how can you blow a fast count? The only reasonable answer to this is Hogan changed the spot in the ring and Patrick didn't want to cross Hogan because of all the power he wields, even though the plan was different coming off the heart Michaels deal, which has been the catalyst for everything in the business since is Bischoff and Hogan and nobody else, perhaps thing decided to do a non fast count. When there was supposed to be a fast count on an angle is your head spinning yet, but that doesn't make sense either because why would they have the announcer sell it as a fast count the next day? So hard when in fact it wasn't. And it was the case of the guy who got screwed and made a fool would have been Hart, who, if anything, this company was trying to portray after the matter, the last company did. So the idea here is. The announcers are really pushing the next day that it was a fast count, but anybody who's paying attention can see it's not a fast count. Did you have a conversation with Nick Patrick on the heels of this event as to why the fast count didn't happen? I had a brief conversation with him. I mean, look, 
I know there, you know, and I don't hear it as much anymore, or read it as much anymore, but you know, the narrative used to be what a hothead I was and how I'd lose my temper and lose my cool. None of which is true. I very seldom lost my temper. Um, I wasn't the most personable person, meaning social, you know, I didn't walk around backstage when I'd see people catering and shake hands, you know, do the normal wrestling, you know, professional courtesy gimmick, um, superficial as it usually is. I never did it, you know, and oftentimes when I get to the building, I was overwhelmed. I'm, I we're understaffed. I'm inexperienced. I'm focused on what I'm doing. And occasionally people would walk by me and I wouldn't look up and say, hey, how are you doing? I would just go about my business. And as a result of that, I had this reputation. And I think it's, you know, where they, you know, throwing coffee at Eddie Guerrero, which, by the way, never happened, you know, and all that stuff. You know, my my reaction to things and the way I, I reacted to them has been distorted over the years. Typically, when something like this happened where something went wrong, as as, as it did in this case, I always looked at it, and I still do. Look, I can't change it. I can't fit right now me losing my fucking cool and yelling and screaming and throwing shit is going to change absolutely nothing. The water, the, 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 uh, as I usually say, the bullet has left the barrel. I can't put it back. It's gone. Now all I can do is focus on trying to fix it. So did I confront Nick? Yes, I did. Did I lose my mind? Did I scream and did I yell? Did I corner him and say, how the fuck could you possibly do this? How could you get this? None of that happened. It was a conversation that was probably less animated than, one, than the one I'm having with you. And it probably sounded something like, Nick, what the fuck? He, he would have told me whatever happened or how it got miscommunicated, which was clearly the case here. It was miscommunication. It wasn't Hulk Hogan, you know, working the gimmick. It wasn't, it wasn't trying to take it. It wasn't any of that. It was poor communication. Simple as that. It, it just it, it it just irks me to have to still you know listen to people espouse this narrative of it was just another Hulk Hogan plan. Oh, in which, Eric, by, by, by the way, in which case he would have gotten nothing more out of it. He wouldn't made ten cents more come on. with one finish than he would with another. Now go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, dude, you yourself say that he. would Rub that old Fu Manchu and say, that doesn't work for me, brother. And now you're going to act like it's ludicrous that we might think that that's what happened here when you managed to fuck up the single biggest moment in the history of wrestling. And now 20 years later, you get on here and lie through your fucking teeth and say, it's cause he wasn't tan. I'm not lying through my fucking teeth. You fucking I'm, I'm finish just... over a tan. Is this real? Yeah, it is real. And the tan was one aspect of it. It, it may be a small aspect to you and, and to, to the fans listening to this. But when you've got a talent that shows up that is totally not prepared nor engaged, has not before has had 12 or 16 months to get ready for this moment where we're going to make this huge, huge change in the direction of the company. And the guy shows up like he just heard about it 45 minutes ago. It tends to make you rethink your position. And whether you agree with it or not agree with it, you know, the, the fact that your good buddy Dave Meltzer even recognized the lack of energy and the lack of in, in terms yeah. of expectation, the lack that represented Sting during his walkout was the same thing that we felt. So, yeah, it makes you change your direction. And it wasn't because of a tan. It was because a combination of a whole lot of things that suggested to us that this guy's head was not in the game, which, by the way, Steve has admitted. Later on, after the fact, due to the circumstances in his personal life, there were he was going through a lot of shit. His head was not in the game. We recognized it, and we made a decision afterwards. That's the truth. You may not like it, but it doesn't make it a lie. Here's the reality. After you've had this built up for 15 months, and now you tell the guy right beforehand, the finish that everybody and their fucking brother knows is coming is now not happening. And we've been building to this single moment. Is it any wonder that he's not out there fucking high-fiving and kissing babies? No, 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 no. You, you know, I'm not going to let you off. You're not going to get away with that. If Steve would have walked through the doors the way he should have been, the way he should have been, which was prepared, ready to go, the finish. And by the way, who walked out of there with the World Heavyweight Championship that night? Well, that's what I'm still, that's what I'm so curious no, 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 about. No, 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 no
you, you, the right guy, but you fucked it up. That's my point. Like, I how don't did understand. we fuck it up? How did we fuck it up? Look at the end of that show. Look at the re- number. It's, it's easy to say this in hindsight, and it may not have been as good as it could have been because what could have been had all of the circumstances been what they should have been, it would have been a massively clean right over the top, no confusion finish with Steve. Guess what? Got to go to plan B. His head is not in the game. That character didn't show up prepared to do what it needed to do. Somebody else did. So we had to adjust to make sure that we got the reaction we wanted to get. Yes, it was a decision. Yes, it was a choice. But I, I will stand by it to this day. If, if you had somebody working for you, Conrad, and I'm, I, look, this is going to be a horrible analogy and a dangerous parallel here, but you know, you were a very successful guy. You built up a great reputation, reputation with your mortgage company. You have certain expectations of the people that work for you. If you're ready to close a big deal, the big deal that you and I talked about that you're working on, you know, right now or is coming up soon. And somebody who was very important to that equation showed up 20 minutes before the meeting, looking like he just got out of bed. I'm not saying that's the way Steve looked, but totally unprepared. And you realize, holy crap, I've been relying on this guy to live up to this particular moment and his head is not in the game. I think I have to go to a plan B. That it's what you do. It may not be what you it may not be what you want to do. You may feel right or wrong 20 years after the fact, but in that moment you feel like you're doing the right thing. And that's, you know, that's, that's as much justification as I'm going to try to, to give this, because no matter what I say, you're going to feel the way you feel, you know, people are going to feel the way they feel. And that's fine. But I'm telling you as a guy that was there, what the motivation was, why would we as a company, why would Hulk sell if Hulk was so selfish and just wanted everything for himself, which I don't understand anyway, because again, he didn't make a dollar more one way or the other. Because right? Hulk Hogan, so the- out of his own mouth, just two fucking months ago, less than that, said in front of a, a packed house at the NWO reunion, I was told this business was a work, but brother, when the guy with the belt makes the most money, well, now it's a shoot, brother. That doesn't always, yeah, that applies in a lot of situations. And when you, when you, you know, more often than not, when someone says, who's the biggest star in the business, Stone Cold Steve Austin or or Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan is going to use that reference. He's going to go back to that tagline that he's used, you know, probably a half a million times over the last 30 years. It's really all about who makes the most money at the end of the day. But in this particular case, let's use that now. Does Hulk Hogan make any more money at the end of the day? whether Steve Sting goes over clean or goes over with an assist or goes over with, you know, a Bret Hart involvement. Does, does Hulk Hogan make more money that way? Or does Hulk Hogan make more money just beating Sting clean? Hulk Hulk Hogan makes more money by having a disputed finish that you guys can then come back and do big houses at subsequent pay-per-view. No, that's not true. He's going to be on that pay-per-view anyway. Are you suggesting that, you know, for somehow Sting's going to come out on top and we're going to leave Hulk Hogan home when he was the hottest heel in the industry at that point? I'm suggesting that he wants to make sure that he's got the next few pay-per-views lined up where it's him and Sting. No, that's not, that's just not true. Well, I mean, here's what I'm saying. You're saying he's not ready, but all you can cite is, uh, he wasn't excited backstage and he didn't have a tan. And so I'm going to, it's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to go into the deeper, darker details listen, of this. Listen, this is a, this is a business where no matter what's going on, you try to wheel them out there, whether it's Jeff Hardy at a TNA pay-per-view or whatever. That's not true. That's not true. No, hang on. Here's my point. It, it, this is the highest, this is the hottest angle in the history of the company. You sold more t-shirts. He is the top merchandise seller now, not the NWO. It's the highest ratings. It's the hottest angle. All you've got to do is stinger splash scorpion death lock tap the fuck out. We're done, but we overcomplicate it and convolute it because we want to bow to the, to the fucking master and make sure that he's got a few more pay-per-views. That's what happened. Now you can That's not what happened. It's that, not what happened. That is what fucking you happened. were home. You were home popping fucking pimples while, you know, watching this shit on TV when it happened, yeah. you weren't there. I was there. That's yeah, not you were there happened. driving it in a fucking ditch. That's where you were. This would have been real easy just to do the easy goddamn finish, but you let Hulk over fucking convoluted. Now, whether you acknowledge that you did that on purpose or not is another thing. Nick Patrick is the guy who fucked it up and you didn't fire him, but you fired fucking honky tonk man for not wanting to do a job to Mark Marrow. What the fuck? 
What does it take to get fired in this fucking company? Jacqueline doesn't want to fucking put over Miss Elizabeth. Get the fuck out of here. You ruin our biggest goddamn pay-per-view ever. See you tomorrow. What the fuck? I don't, I, I, I don't know that that, you know, look, I can, I can easily see, and I could see them. I'm not going to fire a guy. I'm not going to fire Nick Patrick because the communication between the principals involved in the match and the referee sucked. I'm not going to fire him for that. There was a lot of confusion. There were a lot of people involved. And I'm, you know, if somebody, if somebody does, you know, what does it take to get fired or what did it take to get fired? You know, with me, um, you know, it was tough to get fired. Despite the fact that, you know, I had this reputation of loving to fire people. I've fired very few people. One of the biggest mistakes I've probably made during my time in WCW, frankly, was not firing a whole the fuck bunch more. That I'll, that I'll cop to. Um, and maybe I should have fired Nick, well, but I don't think it was Nick's fault. I think it was the agent's fault. And I think it could have been the talent's fault. So let me but, ask, let, let me ask, since you said his head's not in the game, you guys go to a rematch the very next night. I don't know why the fuck you're giving away your biggest shit ever the very next night on Nitro, but you were, but you go off the air before it's done. You get more complaints than any time in WCW history, the Tuesday after, because you promise the match and then don't show the finish, but you do smash the competition in the process, which is the name of the game. It's numbers. You get a 4.6 raw gets a 3.6. Eventually you strip the title of sting, which backs up what you're saying. His head's not in the game, blah, blah, blah. But you fucking give it to him in February. What's the difference? Magically, his problems at home are better. What'd you do? Get him a goddamn tanning bed? What changed between the end of December and fucking Super Bowl in February? You done? <laughs> Jeez, Conrad. Settle down, big man. I'm, I'm getting, I, I don't. I don't want you to bust a fucking blood vessel doing this stuff. And I know you're hot about it. I know it doesn't make any sense to you. And I, I get it. I feel you. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not going to bullshit you, Conrad. You know that. I'm not going to make something up because it's cute or it's convenient or it tells a better story than the reality of it all. Best as I can explain we were trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. A lot of people were disappointed in Starcade. Nobody more than me. Nobody more than Hulk. Nobody more than Steve. Nobody more than WCW you know, employees. We were all disappointed in it. And what we did afterwards was trying to make up for that. Trying to pick up the momentum that we knew we had lost. That's what, that's what February was. Good or bad, right or wrong, that's what it was. It feels like it was part of Hogan's plan. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. I'm just Maybe. saying either. I mean, I don't understand how Nick Patrick's plan not for, fired. Plan for what? What is the plan for Hulk Hogan's contract? You've read it. You know what it is. It didn't matter what he did. If he showed up carrying fucking water, you know, for the people that rang the bell at the side of the ring, um, on a pay-per-view, he would make the same amount of money as if he is if you wrestled in the main event and bet 25 people for a world championship, it didn't fucking matter. So the whole premise of this, you know, Hulk Hogan, cynical, you know, working behind the scenes, the ultimate worker conning everybody using his leverage and his power to achieve what something he's going to get anyway. It makes no sense. It only makes sense if you live in the fight, if you've got that needle in your arm because you're addicted to that conspiracy kind of dirt sheet bullshit no, that everybody no. used to thrive on. Then it makes sense. It makes but sense. But in reality, it, it, in it, reality it, go ahead. It I'm makes sorry. sense when a guy who supposedly runs the fucking show can't fucking explain why he did what he did. I explained it for fuck's sake. No, you didn't explain February at all. Eric, I'm not going to let you sit here and fucking say he wasn't ready. He wasn't in a right state of mind. He had problems at home. He wasn't tan. So we, he fixed all of that in two months. Not no, when he, he fix should have fixed it, but he fixed it all in two months. So February, we just fucking put it on him then. No, we didn't fix it. He didn't fix it. We were, as I said earlier, we were doing the best we could do to try to recover the momentum. We knew that we had lost in December. That's what we did. That was, that was the catalyst for the decision that was made in February. You may not like it. It may not, you know, solve your conspiracy theory, you know, point of view, but that was a fact right or wrong, good or bad, horrible or not stupid or not. 
That's what we were trying to do. We lost momentum. We spent 16 months building up a fucking storyline. We did it better than anybody had ever done it. We knew that we had magic in a bottle or lightning in a bottle, and we got to that pay-per-view, and it fizzled, and we knew it, and we tried to recover the best way we could. What was I supposed to do? Send him home and not use him? I'd have got fucking heat for that. You'd have been bitching at me right now about that decision if that's what it would have been. It was a no-win situation. We did the best we could. Take it or leave it. I'm not fucking taking it. It's not sufficient <laughs> for me. Oh, you're cold. The idea, Dark, the idea that, that we've got this fucking giant fucking storyline. I, I, it's just unbelievable to me that we've got 15 months and all we've got to do is the most simplistic, easy thing ever, but we're not going to do it. I mean, we would do it for Goldberg six months later, seven months later, but we're not going to do it here. It's just <clears throat> crazy. Let's play. What if. Now, have you have you gone back and looked at Starcade? Have you looked at this pay per view? Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Recently. Okay. Tell me how much more emotion and satisfaction for every one of the people that were in that arena, and then I would say anecdotally, every assuming everybody reacted at home the way the people reacted in the arena, on average, um, how could we have possibly created more? goodwill, more satisfaction, more of a sense of, you know, fans getting their money's worth, a better payoff. How could measurably, you can't measure it, so it's not fair of me to ask you that, but how could we have done more than we did? Going back and looking at that crowd reaction, forget about what you've read in a dirt sheet. No, listen, it's a great point what you're making, because at the end of the night, you got it right in terms of there's a big visual, the locker room cleans out or empties out. Everybody lifts thing up on their shoulders for some fucking reason. No one understands. He yells mama Sita into the fucking camera, but whatever <laughs> the belt is over his head. He hasn't said a word in 16 months and the camera zooms in and he looks in and he goes, blah, 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 mama Sita. I think it was because he was cornered by a bunch of the Lucha guys and he was speaking Spanish to him and he didn't know what else to say, but it was pretty funny. It, it's hilarious, but, but still, it's a great visual and it is the big, it, it's what we needed to end the pay-per-view, but that's what I don't understand. Like what was all the other nonsense in there? If this is still going to be the result, he's not ready, brother. Then why are we still putting the belt on him? Fucking beat him. If he's not ready, if his goddamn tanning bed bulbs are blown, beat his pale ass. I no, get it. no, 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 that's, that, that's, that, that's, that's such a simplistic, unfair reaction. No, it, it's, it's if a we bo- would have beat sting that night, that fucking building would have crumbled with anger. Then why do you, the nonsense with the fuck up what, finish? Well, okay. Let's talk, let, just bear with me here. Okay. Forget about how much you hate this. Forget about how much you're not believing what I'm telling you. Let's put all that aside. What? What harm was done? Not only, not, I'm not only going to ask you what harm was done, which by your own admission, really none was because of the reaction we got at the end of the show and the way people felt about it when it was over. So I'm going to even put that aside for a minute. But what else did we accomplish in that match? Again, think about the context of the times. You got Bret Hart in there. Bret Hart was the ultimate do the right thing in the ring guy based on what had happened to him. We were trying to get Brett Hart over. We were trying to establish Brett as probably going to be the lead guy in in WCW, at least one of them. Between what he did in, in my match that I had with Larry and now what he did by forcing a restart, we actually got Brett over even more given the context of where, what he had just been look, through in this match. Look, let me we established say, him. I give you gr- great kudos for that because I thought when I first saw this, this was the plan all along, which makes the whole Earl Hebner rumor that makes total sense to me. If Bret Hart interfering in the main event or, or doing what he did in the main event was the plan all along, I don't really have a problem with it, but because it's a fucking fast, regular count, not a fast count, but a regular count, the whole thing's botched. What makes no, it, it is. worse? We, we agree on that. But well, here's we, what makes it worse that you tell me that Bret Hart interfering was not always the plan and that you made the decision because sting wasn't tan. You what? sound no, no, like no, no, a fucking no, no. idiot. You, 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 you just, you know, I get what I, I understand what you're doing and how you feel and why you feel the way you do. It wasn't just because he had it. He didn't have a tan. 
I'm telling you, that was one example of how unprepared he was. But you if still you, put the belt on If you brought your guy to your mortgage meeting, okay, and he showed up and forgot to wear his fucking pants, all right, or he showed up in a shirt that had fucking ketchup and mustard all over the front of it, it may seem like a little thing, you know, to somebody who's not really involved in that particular moment or or, or issue, but it's an indication that this guy probably isn't up to his up to the task. So you can keep using that. He didn't have the fucking tan like it's some minimal thing, but it's an example or or uh, in a, a manifestation of a much larger issue, which is the guy is not ready for this. But we've still- got to we've got to camouflage it because we don't think he's going to be able to pull it off. It would be no different than if an NFL player showed up to play in a game and he was fucking intoxicated. Or, it, or there was a chance he might be. And I'm not suggesting Steve was. He wasn't. There was, no, there was not even a thought of that. But as an example, when, when, you, when you've got a big moment and somebody that you're depending upon is not ready or you don't think he or she is ready based on their appearance, the way they conduct themselves, the way they carry themselves, and you've got no choice but to make a decision because you know you need to make it as good as it can be, you make a decision. You call the, you call the, you call the play on the spot. And that's what we did with Brett. It wasn't the plan all along. It was our way of kind of fixing this shit. Yes, there was a breakdown in communication. Yes, it should have been a fast count. No, it wasn't a fast count. If you want to blame it on communication or if you want to live in your cons- world of conspiracy theories and your Dave Meltzerville, then go ahead and believe that it's because Hulk Hogan was, first of all, you, you've been around Terry. He doesn't plan that fucking far ahead. All right. <laughs> he, it, <laughs> okay. Point Eric. All right. You win. All right. I'll give you that one. I'm, I'm not, can't even argue that anymore, but it just seems so simplistic that, that this was not always the plan. If this was always the plan, I can almost buy it because you've established the Bret Hart. Who, who said it was always the plan? It was a fix based on day of. That's, because as you would say, he didn't have the fucking can. That's why there was a change. That's why there was a change in the finish. It, it's, it wasn't the plan all along. We made chicken salad out of what we thought was less than, than chicken salad. That doesn't work for me, brother. Well, live with it. I'm just saying. Hey, listen, this has been a fun episode for me. Uh, I, I wanted to talk about this one for a long time. Uh, Clearly. I, I still think you're full of shit, but that's okay. We can still be friends. 